With our scene laid out, now it's time to take a look at the Arnold Render settings. We'll be using the Arnold Render View window, which is an advanced virtual frame buffer with many awesome features. It can be found in the Arnold menu, Arnold Render View. And if we give focus to the physical camera viewport and start the interactive production rendering by clicking on the red triangle, then we will see an interactive production rendering with default materials and lighting. The Arnold Render View, or ARV, is great for everything. Material look development, lighting previews, and even final production rendering. Since the ARV uses the production rendering settings, we'll want to check in on those settings before we begin working on materials and lighting. So I'll close the Arnold Render View, open up the Render Setup dialog, and at the top we see Target. Render Setup has multiple target modes. Most importantly, Production Rendering Mode and Active Shade Mode. Each mode can be configured independently, and the settings for each will be remembered as long as we don't change the active renderer for that mode. If we wanted to render using Arnold in the viewport directly, or in the Active Shade window, then we would choose Active Shade as our target mode, and then we would configure the render settings for quick previews. But since the Arnold Render View has many advantages over Active Shade, we will be using the ARV. In that case, we'll need to configure the settings for Production Rendering Mode, not Active Shade. So I'll switch this back over to Production Rendering Mode, and we'll create two presets, one for interactive draft quality rendering, and another preset for final production. Let's start with the draft rendering. We've already set up our width and height. In the Common tab, we set the output size to a width and height of 540 pixels. Now let's go over to the System tab. We will be using some Legacy 3ds Max maps, so we want to enable Legacy 3ds Max map support. Down here we see Threads, and it's defaulted to Auto Detect Threads. That means it's going to use all of the computer's CPU power. We can restrict that in the Arnold Render View itself, so we can throttle the processor usage there. I recommend if you're using the Arnold Render View to just leave the Auto Detect Threads switch enabled here. Then over in the Arnold Renderer tab, we have controls for the number of samples and the ray depth. The default values for samples are 2 for diffuse and specular components, and that's fine for a draft quality rendering. I do want to increase the number of rays or bounces just a little bit, so we'll have a bit more realistic material previews. I'll bring the diffuse ray depth up to 2, and the specular ray depth also up to 2. Then down here in Adaptive and Progressive, there is a switch for Progressive Render. Let's enable that. That'll give us a little bit faster previews when we're developing materials and lighting, because we won't have to wait for buckets or little squares of rendering to appear in the Arnold Render View. With Progressive Render, the final render pass is going to be drawn by updating pixels randomly across the frame. So that's great for interactive production rendering. So those are the settings that we want for our draft quality. Let's go up here under Preset. We can choose Save Preset. It's going to save inside the current project's Render Presets folder. We'll call it Arnold underscore Draft and click Save. Then we get a dialog in which we can choose which actor we want to store in this preset. We do want to store the Common tab. We do want to store the environment and Arnold, but we don't particularly care about the effects or render elements because those are actually legacy aspects. So if we want, we can turn those off. But we do want to make sure that we have Arnold and Arnold selected. So click Save, and that preset is stored, and it's now currently active. Now we want to establish our settings for the production quality preset. So back in the Common tab, Let's increase the render size. We can turn the image aspect lock padlock on, so it's going to stay a square aspect ratio. Let's set the width to 1080 pixels. Press Enter, and that also sets the height to 1080. Now we want to go back to the Arnold Renderer tab and change up the samples and ray depth. 
For final production rendering, we do want to have a little bit deeper ray tracing. We want more bounces, so we'll set the number of diffuse rays to 4, the number of specular rays also to 4, and we're going to have a highly reflective floor or ground plane, and for that we want a bit better quality in the specular component. Bring the specular samples up to 4 as well. We don't want to use progressive rendering for a final production render. That's just going to slow down the process. So instead of progressive render, we want to just draw with the normal buckets or squares. So turn progressive render off for production rendering. Just to make sure that we don't have any issues, we can increase the number of total rays. That's done in the depth limits. Bring the ray limit total up to a value of 20, just to make sure that we don't have any problems in which rays aren't able to penetrate into transparent surfaces and so on. Okay, those are our production settings. So we can go ahead and store that as a preset as well. Go up to Preset, and from the pull-down list, choose Save Preset, and we'll call this one Arnold Production. Click Save. And once again, we don't need the effects and render elements, so we can turn those off and click Save. And now to switch back and forth between production and draft quality, all we need to do is choose the appropriate preset. So I'll switch back to Arnold Draft, and then load all those categories. Now we're back to ray depth of 2 and 2, and a resolution of 540 by 540. Okay, with our Arnold render settings established, we're now ready to create a simple HDRI lighting setup for material look development.